Hello once again, my fellow modelers. I hope you're doing fantastic, and I hope your autumn season is going well. I've got another vintage model to share with you guys, and I hope you like this video. Now, I recently did a video on the, um, the HMS Bounty and a brief history on what caused the mutiny or a look into the mutiny. And the way I usually do, if you follow my channel, you know a lot of the models that I do, um, I usually do the models as a follow-up. I'll do a video and I'll research the vessel and what I'll do is I'll, I'll write like a, kind of like an essay, it's usually about three pages. And then I'll fact check all the information that I gathered. I'll go back and I'll uh, correct the error, the spelling, the grammar, what have you. And then I narrate it. I like to um, line up the pictures and the video with my narration. Today I want to show you a vintage model kit. This is from the Lindbergh line. And this is the HMS Bounty herself. I was surprised to find that the Bounty actually wasn't built as the Bounty. She was actually a merchant coal vessel. And then she was refurbished and she was relaunched as the HMS Bounty. And this, like I said, this is from the Lindbergh line. Um, I think Ravel has since reissued this kit, um, but this is, I'm pretty sure this is the original release of this kit, HMS Bounty. Mutiny on the Bounty, an exact replica of the historic ship, with preformed sails, plastic parts molded in three colors, easy to assemble. An authentic scale plastic construction kit. You can see a beautiful illustration of the, uh, the Bounty. And of course, that's when she's anchored in Tahiti. They had gone down there to get uh, a supply of the breadfruit, along with the trees they grow on. And unfortunately, the bounty, she never made it home. Let me show you the side of the box. You can see the HMS bounty, an authentic scale plastic construction kit. And the scale is one inch to two, uh, excuse me, one inch to 12 feet, two and five eighths inches. So this is in price in Canada was $249, which is a darn good price for a model. And the Lindbergh line established since 1933. So let's show you guys the ends of the box. And you can see this is kit number 831150. And see the other end I think is the same. Yep. Both ends of the box are the same. So let's see, show you guys the other side. Made in USA. All right. Manufactured by Lindbergh Products Incorporated. Skokie, Illinois. See these additional Lindbergh models at your dealer. The French Lafleur. We've got the Flying Cloud. That's a beautiful ship. And we've got the Wappen von Hamburg. And that's another pretty beautiful ship. And there's nothing on the back. So that's a look at the box. So why don't we go ahead, I'll take you over to the modeling desk and I'll show you guys what's in this kit. All right, so the light is better over here. And you guys can see the box illustration. Again, that's a really beautiful illustration. It doesn't show um, who did the illustration, but the Lindbergh line has some beautiful, beautiful artwork on their model kits. You see the beautiful ship. And what actually got me in, interested in the bounty, let me show you guys. This is what I'm currently reading. This is what I picked up. This is Captain Bly's Portable Nightmare. From the bounty to safety, 4,162 miles across the Pacific in a rowing boat. And you can see that wonderful illustration. I actually used that in my history uh, video. The true story of what happened after the mutiny. At dawn on April 28, 1789, Captain William Bly and 18 men from the HMS Bounty were herded into a 23-foot launch. 
and they were abandoned in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. Thus began their extraordinary journey to Java, covering 4,162 miles. The small boat was battered by continuous storms, and the men on board suffered crippling illnesses, near starvation, and attacks by islanders. The journey was one of the greatest achievements in the history of European seafaring and personal triumph for a man who has been misjudged by history. Captain Bly's portable nightmare reveals Bly's great map making skills used to participate uh, to particular effect while he was exploring with Captain Cook. We discover his guilt over Cook's death at, uh, let's see how I pronounce that, Kila Kekula. Kukula Bay. <clears throat> we learn that the failure of the bounty expedition and the myths that surrounded the mutiny led by Lieutenant Fletcher Christian, the trials and retribulations that followed Bly's return to England, and his success as a navigator, and as a vice admiral fighting next to Nelson at the Battle of Copenhagen. Combining extensive research with dazzling storytelling, John Tooney tells a gripping tale of seafaring, exploration, and mutiny on the high seas while also dismissing the black legend of the cruel and foul-mouthed Captain William Bly and reinstating him, not just as a man of his times, but a true hero. And John Tooney is a photographer, historian, and journalist. He was born in Australia and now lives in Montreal, Canada. Um, I'm going to jot down little things and I'm going to bookmark pages that I think is relevant that you guys might want to know. And when I'm done reading the book, I'll let you guys know all about this book. Anyway, I just wanted to share that with you real quick. So now when we go ahead and we get the uh, the bounty, the actual model kit, and it looks like we have the instructions first. And of course, of course I'll share the instructions with you. <clears throat> Look at that beautiful picture. And that is of the finished vessel. It's not going to be very big. And in fact, you can see that's the scale. <clears throat> now, in 1960, Metro Goldwyn Mayer, they had one built. It was built in Montreal, Canada, and it was a replica of the bounty. However, the one that was made for the movie was 30 feet longer because it had what this one did in it had engines, generators, and a whole bunch of navigational equipment. Um, what makes it even more impressive that Captain Bly was able to go over 4,000 miles um, basically in a big rowboat and keep all his men alive. He did have one fatality. They tried to land on one of the islands and they were attacked and they didn't have guns. So <clears throat> one of the men was killed with stones and um, spears. But you can see that's the finished model. And HMS Bounty, probably no other sailing ship in history has had more written about it than the HMS Bounty. Commanded by Lieutenant William Bly, the Bounty set sail on its historic and fateful voyage. Primarily, the purpose of the trip was to transplant breadfruit trees from Tahiti to the Virgin Islands. On April 4, 1789, after leaving Tahiti loaded with the trees, Bly continued his hard treatment of the crew as he did throughout the voyage. Finally, on the 28th of April, a famous mutiny took place. Led by Mr. Fletcher Christian, the mutineers took over the ship, setting Bly and his followers adrift 41 days later, covering over 3,600 miles. Bly and his men reached Timor, an island west of New Guinea, and eventually making it to England. As for the mutineers, they sailed along the islands until finally setting at Pekaren Island. To avoid discovery, the bounty was burned in 1790. It is known that one crew member survived until 1829. <clears throat> and actually, about a dozen men were picked up in Tahiti by the authorities, brought back to England, and um, ultimately three of them were hanged. You can see the finished model. And this is actually from 1966. It says 1966 Lindbergh Products. So it looks like we're ready to move on to, it looks like step one. Look at the, uh, you can see we're putting the main deck into the hulls, the hull halves, and clothespins will hold it together. 
Note, all parts are numbered for easy identification. Remove part only when that part is to be used. Also, to help find parts, and the letter following the number on the instruction sheet indicates the color of the plastic in the kit. T is tan, D is dark brown, and B is black. If the model is to be painted, use paints for plastic only. We recommend the use of testers paints. Proper colors are noted in the step photos. <clears throat> you can see step one. And that's where we put the halves of the, the hulls together. And we put the main deck in. So let's see, let's go over to part two. And you can see we got to put the gold stripe and we put the stand together with the nameplate and we paint the hull, the bottom of the hull white. The rudder will be brown and the transom will be uh, part 15T. And step three, you can see there's a lot more going on. We actually put detail on the main deck and we put the, uh, the oars and the lifeboat we got the stand and we have everything. Um, that's when all the, the detail will do on when we get to the deck. You can see step four. We got more of the detail going on. Cement the following parts to the deck. You can see all those pieces that we're gonna put on. And they show the corresponding colors, the galley stack, for instance. And step five, you can see we're putting cannon on and uh, the capstan and let's see it looks like part six we're moving on to the masts you can see the crow's nests or the mizzen platforms on to part seven we got the bowsprit Sadly, the remake that they made of this actually sank not that long ago. Hurricane Sandy had um, actually sunk it. The ship tried to navigate around the hurricane coming from Connecticut, going to Florida, and it ended up going right into the storm. You can see we're adding the, um, all the rat lines. And step eight, insert the lower ends of the rat lines into the holes of the side of the hull. In step nine, I like the fact that they give you the rigging instructions. To add more detail to your model, you may add all running and standing rigging. The picture shows the additional rigging. Note, the lines running from the hull to the masts are the same on both sides. And we put the rigging on before the sails. It looks so much better with the rigging. And step 10, cut the sails from the sheet, cement them in place of the yards as shown. See photo for correct position. Nice. And those are the instructions. <clears throat> All right, this looks like it would be the port side. Really nice detail for the 1960s. You can see the wood, the wood grain. And here's the uh, starboard side. So let's put these together and see how they go together. They got worn down over the years, so it's because they have to be cleaned. There's some flash on these. So I guess this has really been in the box since it was released. So let me kind of hook it together like that. It's a pretty good size model. It's um actually see <clears throat> from the bow to the stern it's seven inches
And you know, the bounty itself really wasn't that big. I tried to look up some information on the ship herself, and there's not really a whole lot. Like I said, she wasn't made as the bounty. She was made as a as a cargo ship for um for carrying coal. Sadly, she uh, she was burned, probably to avoid detection by the authorities, and the remains of the ship sunk to the bottom of the harbor. So you can see, it looks very nice. Um, let's check this out next. We got the um, the main deck that'll go in. <clears throat> of course, when we do this, we'll paint it. To make it look historic or as historic as possible. You can see the cargo hatches or the cargo covers. Um, this looks like the uh, mizzen mast platforms or the crow's nests. Look at you can see the ship's wheel right there. Ugh, this is disturbing. There's a hair. Oh. And it's a blonde hair, so I absolutely know it's not mine. All right. I think those are the little barrels of the cannon. <clears throat> and let's see, we got the masts. We got three of those, and this looks like it's the base. And look at, we got the back where the captain's quarters would be. And you can see the name embossed on the back, Bounty. So that should paint up really nice with a detail raised. <clears throat> and it looks like there's a, a rubber band. I mean, for being in the 60s, this thing has been around and so far all the parts are still on the tree. You can see for the, the nameplate, HMS Bounty. And I think this might be the, the bow mizzen or the bow sprout. I'm probably getting that wrong. You can see more pieces that are going to go on, on deck. And <clears throat> these look like more of the uh, to hold the sails in place. And again, it's really nice. All the parts are on the trees. So far, no loose parts. Looks like we got a couple of more cannon. These are probably the larger ones that are gonna go on the main deck. A couple more of the platforms for the masts. And it looks like we're gonna move on. Oh, I spoke too soon. Looks like we got a couple of parts that are off the trees. But this is the rat lines are more of a pliable vinyl type type of material, which is really good because you can see how the, the rat lines will bend. This is a good idea. I think they should all be like that. And they're all in place really nice and looks like we have a decal sheet see the way it is I don't know if it's been cut you can see there's the British flag I don't uh, I don't think it doesn't show any other flags except that one so maybe maybe this is the way it came I'm not sure you can see the um, the British flag and these parts actually I don't know if this is glued in let me see Yeah, it looks like somebody might have snapped it in place or glued it in, because I don't think that that's one piece. Could be, though, but I'm, I'm not going to pry it out. 
but this is the lifeboat. <clears throat> this is a larger one that you can see on the main deck. I wonder if this is actually the one that they set Captain Bly and his men adrift with. And we got a couple of pieces. So we got a couple of pieces that must have fallen off one of the brown trees, or there was a small brown tree that's not um, in the box that I can't see so far. These are the, uh, the anchors. And what else is in there? That's just a little piece of a tree. And lastly, we have the um, sails. <clears throat> so we got So when it comes to the sails, it looks like we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them. Then we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Did I miscount? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, I missed the one in the back. And let's see, the one in the back looks like it could be. Um, maybe this one. You can see the writing on it bounty and they're all lettered and the thing the beauty of this is these will weather up nice so is that everything that's everything in the box so this would be a real this is going to be a really fun model to make um i do want to make this model because of the uh the bounty out of respect to her and what we've been talking about in my video and along with the book I'd like to honor the ship so my friends if you were wondering everything that came in the kit again this is the Lindbergh line the original Lindbergh line from 1966 model kit the um, original release and I know that they've since released this they've also released it uh, Ravel has done the same model and um, <clears throat> there were different uh, companies that came out with this mold but this is the original one and I hope you guys enjoyed the video and until we do the build on this thank you so much for watching and I'll talk to you soon